we're doing it's working i think right i'm in my studio good evening this is a bit weird for me uh because uh, uh I've, this is my oh this is probably going to create a, a crazy vortex so i'm trying to keep an eye on what it looks like for you guys keep an eye on the chat can you hear me is everything working all right can you hear the microphone it looks like it's going through all right I've changed the audio routing this time, um, so it's not going to be coming out of the speakers, um, so you won't be getting any funny echoes and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be improving this studio stream as well, like uh, I was thinking of having a camera up behind me so you could sort of see a view of the studio itself. Um, you know what, I might, uh, can I do a screen? Um, da -da 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 -da. No. I'll make a full screen one for next time, and what I'll do is a bit of a studio tour. I think that might be good. I think you probably want to see what I'm doing there. Um, so I'll give you a little blast in the background of this tune. Let's sort me levels out. Still have to make sure I'm not can you hear my microphone over this? I'll have to just keep the, the fader here. So, yeah, before I actually, before I go any further. So this track, it was meant to be a remix uh, for a friend of mine and an artist on uh, New Electro and Beta called Gomorozov uh, from Russia. And um, we released a single of his uh, at the beginning of lockdown. Um with don't touch your face or like robot voices and stuff um and he did another one that was similar and like really cool vibe electro and everything and i was like hey um how about i uh like do a remix of this and sort of really beef it up um and i started doing it and then i just started adding all all these other elements uh, and it got to a point where there were no elements from the original in at all and it has just turned into a completely brand new track and that's where we are now um his original song was like very electro-y and like sort of Gasafelstein sounding. Um, and this is just, uh, I, I was, I've been sort of trying to do something, a kind of ravey, uh, you know, summer of 89 kind of vibe for a long time. And I'm planning on doing quite a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so this is, this is sort of where this song has been going. Um, it's by no means finished, I warn you. Um, I might actually do a bit of work on it today while we're talking and um but what i'll do i'll just play it you through now with the minimum of chat so you can sort of hear where i am um and then i'll sort of play through bits and show you the individual elements and things so for those of you who don't know this is logic x on a mac uh what you're seeing on the screen here if i um switch to that you get a bit of a better view i'm working with a 4k display so there's loads of shit on here um it might be a bit too small for you to see um, but I'll zoom in when I'm editing things so it's a bit more uh, obvious. I'm trying to keep things simple these days, but I always fail. Um, but I'm really trying to do my best. Um, one of my jobs for this track, I, I always write down a big list of tasks. Got it here. Um, is to like try to cut stuff back on this and that'll be part of the mix down thing. So, um, so anyway, so here we go. Um, so this is direct audio, I'll turn it up. Sorry I'm a bit late by the way. I went for a run. <laughs> I can't fail as much as the guy that hit my BMW, that is true. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat the whole time so I can see all your comments. Got the old school brakes and stuff. Hi, John. 
I was really pleased I found that vocal. Uli, thanks for the tip, mate. Thank you very much. This vo that vocal's just uh, chopped out of a like sample pack, and I, I pitched it around a bit to make it sound more unnatural and ravey. I put those cowbells in just before I went for a run. Gonchi or Gonchi zero zero. I'll answer that once I've stopped playing it, so I don't talk over it too much. Thanks for the sub, Tongue. Oh, this is sounding all right. What? Whistle for say. <laughs> This bit here, there's no bass in that section. I'm, I'm wondering whether I go back to the first section that happens after the drop, or I wanted to have the bass line kind of developing throughout this whole section. Um, and I always find getting the bass line right the hardest part because it's so important. This is like the pre breakdown. This is sort of I'm going for. A, I always overdo it with my breakdowns, but. I really want to get this breakdown right so it can be a real like peak moment and then like the full-on head rush stuff hello I in the chat on Facebook what's up Dexter so I've got my beeps in there I think that vocals occurring too often this blue bit here that's that's the vocals the st it's, it's definitely happening too frequently there I love those cowbells do, 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 do. I was looking for like original rave and they ha those cowbells happen to be like in exactly the right key for this track That's about as far as I've got, so I'm going to turn it down here. There was one thing, um, so yeah, so that's where, where we're at. Like, uh, I'm basically trying to have a memorable intro that sort of sets the scene and then a nice breakdown and build up here in this section. Um, and then going into sort of a clean modern version of like old rave and i'm sort of trying to use a whole bunch of tricks in there so there's some questions that came up here i'm just going to scroll through um the chat uh, i think it's missing a leading bass line in the background but i'd love to have a leading bass line below um, yeah, like the baseline is not finished. I'm, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute and show you where I am with it and how I've been building it up. I, I know what I'm aiming for, I think. Um, but it's it's that stage in the track where I know it has potential, but um, I don't want to make the wrong decision and fuck it all up. So I'm having to like tread very carefully. I've been putting this, I only worked on it for a couple of hours today. Um, and I spent one whole hour. I really wanted to, so there's this thing, I really wanted to have... Um, the sound of like an old rave the 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 combination of the horns and the whith whistles and the crowds and everything so i went on this old like tape packs website just to try and find um some uh like ambience from a rave you know when they've done a rewind but there's there's no mc speaking so i um and that would not be it uh where is it oh there we go whistles yeah tape pack whistle posse so I found like some small section from a thing and then kind of chopped it up and then cross-faded it to make it more seamless. You can still, it's so far in the background, you can 
It doesn't matter. And then there's a bit of someone going like, listen, I'll let me hear ya. Just to give you, it's, it's one of those in the background psychological little tricks. But anyone that used to go to raves, that's the sound. I should just put that on ambience and play it in the house all day. <laughs> um, so that took me an hour this afternoon to, to find the sample and get it working. So, uh, sorry, there were some more questions there. People were asking about my car. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that another time. People are here for um, some studio stuff. But um, my car got smashed up because some idiot crashed into it and it got written off. But um, the story ended okay. I got some insurance money and then I've just had to buy a new car and I'll eventually pay it off. <laughs> um, if I ever have any gigs again to pay off the loan. Um, so what we got uh, yeah white gloves yes absolutely um da, 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 da. what are the colorful lines on the top bruno batista is saying ah yeah i covered that last time but i'll mention it again so these are markers um they're not actually correctly set up for this track really i should move it so it's just a little visual thing i started doing i don't know about a year ago um the, in logic there's this area at the top where you can it's you can also have things like this where you automate your tempo changes and things like that but i just put little colored zones in here so i kind of it helps me see you know how long the track is going to be so this this top one here if i can i zoom in oh no it won't let me zoom in on them um so the yellow one at the top uh, here is the intro the blue section here is where the breakdown happens um this section here is called drop it's basically uh, 16 or 32 bars or something immediately after the breakdown then yeah this is incorrectly um, done actually so I'll would that be considered the rollout there I don't know um, yeah I should really have a, a, a like a pre breakdown how do I do a new one can I have a new default marker default marker inside a ride I'm gonna fuck it up now Oh no, there we go. Uh, what should we call it? That's going to be pre-drop. So it's just... Um, I, I mean, when I first started producing, I would work so... Uh, that's called pre-rop. Uh, yeah. Make some noise for the rop. The drop. Um, when I first started producing, I could, you know, rinse out a tune in a few hours. I'd work so quickly, I wouldn't label anything. I would just be so intensely focused in it. And things were simpler then that you just, you know smash it out but as you can see even this is not even finished or anywhere near finished and it's still looking pretty crazy the amount of stuff that's going on um so i try to color code things and lay them out um a bit more sensibly and yeah these colors at the top um i use just as a, a sort of a guide so i can see what's going on with the arrangement and have a, a rough idea of what's happening where um do i play the keys on a synth or are they samples uh do i spread the samples across the keyboard yeah i play um all the keys and uh, all the notes and stuff um all i do combinate the bass is a combination of um like bounced audio so the piano for example so what have we got here um so if we look at the intro i'll just sort of loop this first bar show you what we've got here so this is a random percussive thing. I think this is the final, this is the last sample left over from what it was originally a remix. Just some like, except I think I chopped it up a bit. I wanted to go for, um, oh, how are we doing on vault? Can you hear my voice okay over the music when the music is this loud? It looks like, yeah, it looks like you should be able to. Um, the intro is kind of going for like an LFO kind of tip, like that uh, group. Um, so we've got these high chords I'm playing. They're coming out of, I love this, it's the, the Korg M1 um, soft synth. This, I was having another little play on it today. This I was like, holy shit, there's so many sounds on here that I totally recognise. Um, yeah, Lyndon Allen saying, I've heard some big producers mention you don't need more than 20, 25 tracks for a solid, tra solid track. Absolutely true. Some of the best stuff is super simple. You shouldn't have to use so much stuff. I mean, you can have only a few elements and an awful lot of tracks, um, but all of the extra elements and things are like mixed down techniques, you know, doubling stuff up, parallel processing, adding dirt to stuff um, and all of that. So I'll just show you some of the elements that are here. So that's just some chords. Uh, I put some little claves in for the old 
sort of 90s drum and bass percussion helps you have a you don't need it so much now that everyone you put beat grids on and stuff before you mix it um but little bits of percussion were always key in um oh am i out of the camera do i need to move it a bit little bits of percussion were always really <laughs> helpful um so you knew where you were when you're mixing a track so and then one thing i did here that i haven't done before is having the a bass line in right from the very beginning again sort of trying to go for that lfo 93 sort of vibe um i may take that out and i'm going to replay that anyway because that was also um from the original track of gomorozov's um i talked to him a little bit about it today like i'm certainly gonna start his remix again <laughs> and do it how i meant to um but if i still leave some of his elements in here i'll be giving the credit <laughs> um so it's always a bit weird like soloing individual bits um oh, so i've got this here this is sort of random loop i got off something that's off an old rave something or other um sort of so i use a combination of real synths and stuff i've played with sort of grittier samples on something like this where i'm trying to capture a, a vibe and sort of make it sound convincingly retro um i've got some little 303 notes here that needs work um and i'm going to automate these as well uh this is from the the actual t roland tb303 um soft synth which always terrifies me when i start to load it because i get this spinning ball of death um, but it's really realistic. So I was going to be doing some automation. I had a whole bunch of other acid parts in this that I've muted that I really wanted to use. That I really want to use in something. Um, but they're just, they just don't fit in this track. They just sort of take it in a completely different direction. Um, I really want to be doing some like acid drum and bass tracks. It's, it's just hard to make the rhythms work you know they, they work great for 4-4 four, four, but they're a bit too busy but check that out heavy oh i think it's already got auto yeah i'm fiddling around with it but i've already got automation on it yeah see that's all the automation i might leave that in let's um if i mute that one turn off that Yeah, how about, ooh. Ah, there we go. That's our first on-stream Eureka moment. I'll leave it in, yeah. I remember doing all that editing and I must have just muted it. So one thing, um... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, if you follow me... Oh, yeah, I should really be looking at the chat as well, Ron. I'll just go off on my own world if i don't um uh check the the chat too much um have i tried the new roland subscription stuff yeah this is this is it i absolutely bloody love it it's amazing um full disclosure they hooked me up on like an artist um deal uh so uh my bigging my bigging up is completely genuine but i love it even more because they hooked me up um but there's so many things if i um let's open a new channel without killing something off uh loading plugins um right so this is the i haven't used this sound in it yet this is a korg m1 but i mean this is so have i got drop and pre-drop the wrong way around yes i have that should actually be called pre-breakdown really shouldn't it I still like, I, I used to always call the drop, like the the breakdown, rather than when it all kicks in. But then the sort of EDM kids are, are all like, oh, do you love the drop, mate? Meh, 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 meh. So is the, has the drop now become when it all kicks in? or Because the drop for me is when everything drops out and it's the breakdown. So I don't know. Um, so I, I get mixed up with myself. But um, yes, you, you were correct there. That's like the pre-breakdown area. It's actually here, really. That's just the sort of continuation of the drop, even though the drop is actually that in old John B speak, but whatever. Um, 
Do I usually pick about a certain amount of seconds for my intros? Have I ever forgotten to press save? Yes, a lot back in the day. Um, Logic sort of auto saves and I just sort of OCD instinctively train myself to just keep saving. Um, one thing I do as well, which is a new um, little trick of mine in, sort of in the last year is every day when I'm working on a track or like every day when I start the new day, I save as... Um, the song file and I write day six or something so I've got completely different saved versions representative of one day's work so if I have one day where I make loads of changes and I just fuck it up I can kind of go back a bit and and it also helps me like psychologically um keep note of how much time I've been sinking into a track that I may end up starting to hate um how do I always have I always worked in logic yes um I worked on notator started on pro 12 and then pro 24 on Atari ST and then um moved to c-lab notator on the Atari ST and then I got logic on a mac when I think when G4s just came out, so I was a little bit late to the party on on Macs and everything. Um, all the drum and bass crew, especially when we used to hang out more in the music house and everything, had a habit of all... As soon as somebody got a secret weapon and then everyone got word of it, they all jumped on it. I remember when it was like the TC finalizer, which was like a, a catch-all, one-button, make-everything-louder thing. I was like, mate, you get a TC finalizer, it's massive. Uh, it's a one and a half grand or something as well. <laughs> uh, I, um and then it was it was hard disk recording you're getting the hard disk recording thing and so everyone was buying max and uh that was that was a huge shift in how how i worked so um uh oh yeah so i was going to show you some of the, the stuff so this is the core game one if you know old rave you'll know that sound i'm playing these notes on the keyboard here you can't see me um so if I open up the Roland, stuff, I don't want to give away all my um, tricks here because um, there's some bloody amazing sounds on all these Roland things. Like I was, I was always a Roland guy um, back in the day. My first proper keyboard was a Roland D10. I uh, had Roland samplers, had a Roland U220 sound module, and this Roland Cloud stuff. They have like perfect software versions of all of that stuff and all of these these sounds that i remember from like right back in the day like you know with anything there's some da, 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 da. see check this out it's amazing <laughs> okay first tune i pick is not the best there'll be a lot of um it's a nice pad there oh <laughs> oh yeah Recognise that. There's some weird shit as well. What the fuck is all this? These are all. This was the dance track, so there's some weird loopy things. I never had one of these, so I, I'm not feeling the. Um, these are all beats and groove, whatever that is. What that is. Okay, this is not a good example of. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, those they're they're very nineties. Oh, there you go, gem. Oh, oh, that's a split keyboard thing. Yeah, stick some reverb on that and do a nice loop, quick, critical kind of two-step, and you got a fucking banging tune there. Oh. I, w I will do a live tune sometime, but I work... The beginnings of a tune sounds like really stupid and you'll lose completely all... If you ever had a respect for me, I'd lose it all in an instant because you'd see me go... Bleh, 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 like bumbling around until I sort of hit a eureka moment. And then you'll just see me going through like 5,000 snare drums until I get the right <laughs> snare drum. So um, one thing I wanted to show you was what I did with this break today. I was really pleased with. So um a, a lot of the breaks uh i've tried to use original breaks in this track and keep them sounding pretty clean but beefing them up um if i just play you at the drop or the where the drums come back in everything here so you've got this i call this break the you betcha break because <laughs> there's a if it goes on longer it goes you betcha you betcha i i had no frame of reference when i was recording my samples in back in the day 
um, so it's it's probably got a correct name, but I'm too it's too ingrained in me. So I just whacked on a kick to beef that up a bit. I didn't want to layer up too much stuff because you can't clean up a like a break too much. But I wanted to make sure at least the kick was solid. Um, there's some hats on top as well just to keep them tight. So what I did this afternoon, if we just listen to the break on its own. So this is the break just on its own. And then we can't really zoom in, but if you see my mouse pointer down in the bottom left, I'm, um, can you see it wiggling around? What I did was I sent it full to this other bus. Can you hear the difference there? Okay. Off. Off, just original. You bad sister, yeah. You bad sister, or you bitch. Ah, um, oh, Frank Mendes, yes. You're a man that knows your breaks. So if I click this. So what I did, it was a bit like a, a, a dirt bus thing. So the break is getting sent to the little altar boy, I think. So it's going to this, which is adding some weird formanty shit. Uh, so it's at minus 5.9, don't forget that, because that's how it sounds good. So at the extremes, it sounds weird. I'm actually going to use this for some edits. Going to, like, do a drum edit and then go... So I thought, well, why not sort of have the same break on a parallel processing chain, but pitch down lower to sort of add it more beef and... Yeah, and then also I put an overdrive after it. Not Not too bad. Um, and also it's adding some funny stereo effects that don't seem to be doing anything too bad. Um, but that really helped you sort of beef it up a little bit for me. Oh no, Urban, Urban Dawn's in the mid- oh, No, you've got more tricks than me. I, I would say you're going to nick my tricks, but... You're far better at getting stuff sounding crisp and clean than I am. Um, so yeah, so that was... Um, I actually bought this uh the sound toys little altar boy and there's another one called filter freak um i saw spy was doing something making a nice bass sound he sort of shared a instagram story or something um going oh filter freak's amazing so i went on and there was a sale on sound toys there might still be um and uh i tested out the demo of this one as well because it does some amazing stuff to vocals you can like strip out all of the pitch and then um you know beastie boys intergalactic at the beginning goes intergalactic it does that kind of stuff. Um, so I know that'll be useful for future sort of robo tracks. Um, so yeah, so I got them. I, I can see myself using them a lot. Okay, where where's the soloed stuff? So we've got that. I'm glad I found the acid. Everything here needs to be tamed. And I haven't got anything on the master chain yet at all. So mix sound wise, I haven't even started on that. So the breakdown here, I've got my go-to nice low string. I usually use just, there's a preset on the ES2 that I always use. And the piano, that's just the classic Korg M1 piano. I just played it. You can see the notes there. That was definitely a eureka moment for me too as well, because um, I knew the tune had potential when I started it but it needed something to sort of switch up a bit in the um, breakdown. So I bring it in with a, a filter. You can see the automation on the high cut. See, this is happening automatically there. I'm just checking the chat. I love those cowbells. I'm so pleased. I put them in literally just before I went for a run. I was like, yes, that's just what I wanted. And uh, I made this little drum fill. I called it Prodigy Fill. I sort of uh, resampled the individual drum hits and then played them and then bounced it in again. Um, that's a sort of classic just trying to think of all the uh, like classic rave references um definitely a lot more to do in this breakdown um 
I'll probably do the old trick where you roll off all the low end just before everything kicks in to give it more impact. That snare fill here is a bit cheese. Oh, and that Ventil 8 thing as well. I fire. Uh... So I've got this Ventil, <laughs> Ventil 8. So I've got this, um, it's a plugin called AU Speak. There's a free to download one, I think, uh, Wavasaw, and um, you can type in any words and it says it in like that classic sort of rave voice. Um, so I, was, I thought Ventil 8 is a, a good sort of COVID reference. Um, so if, what are we got? Oh yeah, so we've got the, we've got the beeps coming in there. It's quite a lot of little quiet little tricks in there. Got the old air horn. Um, got that. And then we got the whistle crew. Whistle crew, whistle crew, absolutely wicked. Hold tight to Twitch Massive. Hold tight to production crew. This one's going out. Yes, yes. Inside the ride, absolutely wicked and wild. <laughs> I'm going to have to automate that crowd thing uh, so it doesn't take over, but I want it to sort of dip in and out. Um, and then when you take it away, it'll sort of um, have another nice renewed effect. So here is all my bass. Um, it's still a bit messy. Um, and the bass is like based around the original pattern. Um, but there was a sort of triplet in it. So I've changed it. So um, because it's what I'm trying to do is like have a pretty pure kind of sub bass for the most of it. Um, but saturated not too much and sort of do stuff to the higher end so i'm kind of layering things and rolling off the bass on other things and there's a lot more to be done on this but um if we solo um i don't think so that one's muted anyway so i've just that's just a straight up um poorly looped sample you can hear the clicking in it but i'll leave that in because it's sort of um how you used to do it i want those notes to be a bit longer but i'm not going to tweak it on um on stream because i don't want to sort of ruin it when i'm not thoroughly focused um so that's just a pure sub i've got there um these are bust out and they'll obviously be side chained off a kick and things um then i've what i've done is copied that for a sort of saturated tops thing um notched out a bit of the there's a sort of a clicky thing that was happening and then took the bass out and then just run it through some saturator and like bass guitar amp and just some crap to sort of give it a grimy top end i'm still not satisfied with that but um it works for now and then the lower notes the boom boom is actually from the original audio of what I just started off as a remix, just single notes. Um, so I may redo them. Um, I may not like. I one thing I'd heard some. I think Spore um, was talking about this somewhere where you know, like bass notes and things, um, different notes sound louder or quieter, even if even if it's you know a sine wave or whatever and it's the different frequencies and things, different notes can sound louder than other ones. So um, uh, well, I'll see how this all pans out when I do it. But I, th I think almost having different notes here on different as different uh, with different sounds and different channels was going to give me a bit of flexibility to just be able to tweak things a bit um, and keep the levels uh, the same. I mean, they all go through the same bus. They're all going to get squashed up even more. Um, one thing I haven't done yet is then send the bus, the bass bus, to a, um, a like a bass dirt bus, which should help uh, really grime it up. Um... Ah, I need to turn the bloody acid off here because it sounds shit there. Um... Da, 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 da. How did I? Yeah, I think. I... The only th annoying thing about that TB303 um, 
soft synth is it just only seems to operate if it's on it just plays its arpeggio over and over and over so you have to sort of automate the volume to like stop it occurring uh quick check of the chat Da, da, da. what sort of bus arrangement do i do generally um i talked a little bit about this last time but i have a, a template that i need to renew um that i you know it, just the same basic principles you would like i i start with quite a lot of buses probably and then group those buses into smaller ones um if we have a look here, I don't know if you can really read the text of what we have, but I've got so much shit going on here. A lot of this isn't used. It's because it's from the um, uh, the template. So, like, essentially all of the kicks, like, it, depending on the type of track I'm doing, a kick may be built up of, like, three different kicks. Um, although that's pretty extreme and I would be... That would be very rare. Um, but one thing I do is just to make life easier if i've got kicks doing something in a build-up going um i might use a different kick than the actual main kick so i'll just stick that on another channel it just makes it a bit easier when you're mixing stuff down and all of that and i've got the processing power and can run extra tracks and stuff on here so um sort of i'm a bit more sloppy with some stuff but it makes life easier as long as you can remember what everything is and where it is um so like all the kicks will be bunched together all the snares um i'm looking at the buses down here at the bottom so i've got like hats splashy stuff per percussion and that and then what I, I i may and breaks usually are on a separate bus of their own i may then bunch all of that together onto one individual fader that's just drums um bass all goes in together that's pretty simple um and what i have started doing lately is i do a sort of parallel um processing thing a bass dirt you can see here um where everything that's in the bass it goes through a bunch of saturation and weird shit um but at a much lower level and it just sort of adds harmonics and a bit of character and everything because a, a lot of my stuff uh, until now but still like just suffers from sounding a bit kind of sterile and um I, I don't know just a bit too sort of preset-y and I, I, I don't know it, it, at least it does to me I don't know um so I'm trying to sort of do a few things to make things a bit more grimy um when it's when so much stuff comes from soft synths and all of that um then all the strings and the pads and stuff all get bussed together and then anything that i want to be side chaining off other things uh will be put on a bus to do that like the obvious one is having the bass getting side chained off the kick um and then sort of anything that would be fighting with a snare for space in the mix you can side chain off that um, i always use um isotope alloy 2 for my sort of compressy side chainy stuff um i think i've already got that going here on the bass um i haven't tweaked any of this yet because i'm not at the mixing down stage on this track yet but you can see i like alloy 2 because it gives you like um a visual representation of what it's actually doing. You can see the ducking happening. Um, and yeah, and then obviously I use buses for the effects and everything. Um, I'm gonna make a brand new template to make life a bit easier. So this one does the job. Um, so let's, so after this point, when it gets to bar 81, there's a really nice drum edit here that's mainly all done with audio. Quite proud of that. <laughs> Let's play again. For... The old, uh, I think I'll credit Matrix with that trick, the old missing out the first kick of the bar after a fill. I've got that in there. So here it switches up. Um, the, I add some more breaks in. The, the Lynn Collins think. So that's in from a sample and then just triggering individual bits. Just looking at your... Um, you can see bleep loop. Yeah, there's some bleeps. Got a bit of dread there. Got some spasms from the mentasm spasms is somewhere. Loads of fucking echo. 
If Metric was here, he'd come and chop my head off for that. Far too wet. Keep it dry, John. Keep it crisp. <laughs> no! <laughs> so you can hear the bass switches up as well. Um, just to remind you, so before it was like this. So I add in, this is where the fab filter comes in. So I took the original sub, which was originally, uh, it's just playing out of the logic sampler. Um, I rolled off some of the low end, so it wasn't fighting with the actual genuine sub. I could probably get more off, but it doesn't seem to be causing any issues. Saturated a bit with the Saturn. And then using Filter Freak. What's up with these little... There's some little visual bugs in Logic at the moment. Yeah, if I bypass this, you can hear what it was like before. On. Off. On. <laughs> Everyone's going to be running out and buying Filter Freak now. But there's loads of presets in here. Um, I definitely think I'll be using that a lot to dirty up bases. Um, I, I'd need to add more funny bass stuff on this and then develop it. Also got those. Woo, 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 woo. And got the Wraith. There we go. There. I was expecting to have to search for hours to find this sample, but luckily when I was, I decided to stick it in, I found it quick. Um, oh, is this my... I think I had a really dubious other piano line. Yeah, I was thinking about using this. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Paul from Pendulum would like that. I'll send him that pattern, he can have it. I wonder if that might sound good in the breakdown. Um, no. No, that's a bit much. I think it loses its seriousness. Um, the other thing, if you follow me on Twitter, the sounds here that I was really trying to emulate the sounds at the beginning of Killer um, by um, uh, Adamski. The, the like, um, and I spent ages. Sorry. Um, because I was like, they must just been a preset off a synth that was around at the time. They'll be easy, easy, you know. Just Google some pictures of Adamski in the studio back in whenever he did that track. Um, did I call it Adamski? It must be easy to find the bits. Where did I put them? I think it's them at the top there. Um, so everyone was like, oh, we used a, an SQ80 or something, uh, N-Sonic. So I, I found this free N-Sonic SQ80 um, uh, soft synth thing, or it's, a, it's like um, like donationware. Um, it seems really good, and there's loads and loads of presets on there and stuff. Um, I, could, I could see lots of tracks sort of coming from it. Um, but And I went through every single preset. Probably went through about a thousand. Thanks for the follow, Quigley Figgins. Oh, I saw a subscription from somebody earlier as well, and I meant to say thank you. Um, and I can't see it now. Damn it. Um, oh, no. I think I called you out, but... Uh, oh, bum. Um, yeah, thanks for the follows and the subscribes, everybody, because they're really helpful with this. I'm trying to build up my um, Twitch following and just trying to do more of this, because it's good fun, actually. Um so yeah, anybody doing that stuff, it's a great help. And if you're watching this on like YouTube or Facebook or something, please, please, please come and watch it on Twitch because eventually I'm actually going to stop streaming on those other services and do everything purely on Twitch. So um, please come and get used to using Twitch because it is a lot better. Um, and there's all, uh, when I do my gaming stuff, which is very rare, but I think I might allow myself to have a bit of a gaming session tomorrow. Um, I'm only going to stream that on Twitch. Um, so if you're into gaming, if you want to see a, a, an unemployed drum and bass TJ failing miserably at video games, uh, come and watch me 
tomorrow afternoon. Um, join Twitch to see this, says Medic. Thank you. Respect. You won't regret it. I, I, I used to be so disdainful of Twitch and uh, just didn't get it. And um, I actually started before lockdown and everything. I started checking it out to learn more about this video game that I play called uh, Escape from Tarkov. And um, it's so cool. Like the, the community seems so much nicer and not toxic and and everything like, the, you know, a lot of social media things and all of that. Everyone's very grumpy and trolly and all of that. But it does seem nicer here. And I think the people that are like doing channels and broadcasting are sort of, you know, I know what I am. I'm trying to do something cool that I think you'll like watching and trying to sh give you the benefit of my expertise a bit. Um, I'm really enjoying doing the DJ sets as well. Um, and they're sort of showing you the promos and new releases. So yeah, hope uh, it's nice to see people watching. So, um, anyway, um, yeah. So anyway, so I was on my Twitter, which is not very, Twitter's not very nice. I was like, hey, does anybody know like how, how Adamski made those sounds at the beginning of Killer? Um, I would try and play them now, but I, uh, because of how I've had to get my audio routing to stream from, I can't like just play off Spotify. So I, I don't know. You'd think I'd know how to do that, but I can't. Thanks for the follow, Dramatique. Um, so I ended up sort of making sounds like them. Um, I mean, they're bloody simple sounds to recreate anyway. So I just made them in. Um, so we got filter drops. I made them in ES1. Um, dong, 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 do, dong, 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 do, do, dong. Oh, oh. It's, but here we go. Come on, make the sound. Yeah. So that's basically just like an ES1 through a compressor, then a bit crusher to make it a bit bit crushy, um, overdrive to make it a bit grimy, uh, EQ to filter out the lows and boost the mids a bit more, make it sound more shit. Uh, and then sample delay, which is a nice little uh, built-in logic plugin that just sort of you you can hear the difference. It just I've taken it off now. It just gives it a bit of weird wideness. So that's without it. On the next sound, the next time it hits, it'll have the more sort of wideness. For those of you not listening to this on your phone. Oh, Rodney rolls. All right, mate. I was just thinking about you when I was out for a run because I thought I saw you go past. Um, and then, so I made this, the Rezo Bells thing as well. That's me There you go. I, th I think I nailed that. That sounds pretty close to the Adamski one. Bit of sound design for you there. The Rezo Bells one, again, was just something off Omnisphere. Going through a compressor and a bit crusher and distortion. Oh, no, don't steal my serial number. I'm paranoid when I open one of these plugins. You're going to be like, oh, John B. serial number. I'll copy that and I'll get myself on this sphere. Um, so, what else have we got? Of... I love those cowbells. I love those cowbells. Bruno Batista. Oh, yeah, you asked that before and I didn't answer you. Um, said, when I start a tune, do I already have an idea of what it will be or I do just play and see what's going to happen? Yeah, I, I totally have an idea of what I want to do before I start. Um, I've got a whiteboard behind me. Um, I mean, there's a lot of cover versions of tracks I want to be doing soon. I'll start this. Let's play this from the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I, I have like concepts in mind right through to like full sort of ideas for stuff. This one, uh, well, uh, when I started, it was meant to be a remix of a Gomorozov track. But I'd also had a few other tracks I'd sort of started playing with the acid stuff. Ah, which reminds me. I need to deal with this acid. John B's doing acid on a stream. I can't believe it, mate. Is it this one? Oh, no, that's the whole pause. Mate, where's the acid? There's the acid. Okay, yeah, so you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet, Mr. Usud. There we go. Um, yeah, so I'll have it like the concept for this one is make something sort of derivative, slightly inspired by kind of Adamski LFO in the intro, um, using sort of rave um, elements, the piano. Um, the sort of summer of love like trying to capture 
that sort of ravey, uplifting vibe that I think we're all going to be desperate for once we can start going out raving again. Um, although it's going to be winter by the time we can start go raving again. It, or maybe it'll be next summer, I don't know. Um, the Poland 303. <laughs> it's the Roland 303. <laughs> I think you're talking about that t-shirt. Yes, the Ensonic SQ80, says Mib. 93. That's what everyone was saying. And I, I downloaded the Ensonic SQ80 emulator and I went through every single single preset and they weren't in there so yeah I need to work on that acid ah see the bloody acid should have shut up there flipping acid the fuck ruin my breakdown bloody acid wanker That's annoying. I'm sure there's a simple solution to it, but because it's like a permanent arpeggio thing, you have to sort of bypass it. And I couldn't, there isn't a, an automatable MIDI like um, start and stop the 303. So am I clipping? What, the mic or the, uh, oh, well, yeah, it looks like the mic is. I need to quieten down a little, don't I? I was ranting about my acid. Oh, we've almost done an hour. Cool. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I was going to show you as well, how I put the brakes together. Um, so I keep all my brakes up here. These ones are greyed out. There's they're nothing happening. So I, there's a few bits that come in in this second part. So that's beefing up the you betcha break. If I can unmute the right one. There we go. I had to do some unnatural acts because those sampler patches of those breaks I, I made 15 years ago or something. Uh, no, it's not the ABL3 um, Rodney Rolls, it's, which I, I used to love. Like I tried that out. It's wicked. Um, ooh, I've just spotted. Oh, that's interesting. I kept that break going. No, it's the actual Roland TB303 software synth that's part of the Roland Cloud. Do I recommend any websites for samples that are quite cheap? Um, you know what I've just started using, uh, full disclosure, because they hooked me up, <laughs> um, is the Loop Cloud thing. That's fucking amazing. Um, that's really good. They've got a never-ending source of stuff. Let's have the Whistle Posse again. Where's the Whistle Posse? Whistle Posse! Oh, there we go. That's the Rave Crew. Oh, that's my... Where are, the, where are the ravers? Oh, they're down there. Tape pack massive. Absolutely wicked. Yes, yes. Hold tight a New Year's Eve crew. This one's absolutely massive. Hold tight a Twitch. Hold tight a streaming crew. I came here for production lessons. All I caught was some raven. Raven. <laughs> Do I make unique breaks for every tune? Um, uh, I mean, the drums are always new, but the way I do my drums, it's usually like layered up all sorts of stuff. Um, sometimes I'll import it, like, depends what I'm doing. I might, just to get things rolling, I might just drop in a sort of break pattern from a previous track while I, so that I can progress with playing the music bits. Um, it, it, it really varies, but I have a huge sample library now that I've built up over however many years I've been on a Mac. Um, and I've luckily managed to keep it pretty well organised. I have it like on a separate drive in my computer. Um, and it's it could be better organised, but I know where things are. Um, and also, if you're doing a template, of course, you can always have it. So it always loads in, you know, a few staple samples that always use. Um, 
So what some of the questions we've got here? Um, in the old days, before it was easy to access samples, what was your way of gathering samples for tracks? Um, well, you'd sample them off records. You'd, you'd listen you, any drum and bass records you've got or old hardcore records. You'd hope that there was a little four bar section, maybe at the end of it or something, where the producer had left the break clean and you'd be like, oh, I love that, I will. Um, so there was a lot of that. Um, or, you know, you'd have a friend who would say, uh, who would know about where all the breaks had originally got sampled from. Uh, and you could still do a sample CDs you could get there um, on the cover of uh, the, the cheap way would be every week to buy like computer music, sound on sound, future music magazines. Um, and uh, th there'd be like... Um, demo samples from upcoming sample cds that you'd buy from time and space distribution and stuff um and that was the so i'd like save up and buy because they were about 70 quid to buy a cd a sample cd that would have all sorts of stuff um on there uh and the, the, i mean they were expensive but the way i rationalized it was like this is a sample cd that costs 70 quid but if it spawns an idea that can make one decent track, then it should, hope, you know, pay for itself, hopefully. <laughs> Nowadays, if you make 70 quid off a tune, <laughs> you're lucky, but um, yeah, I won't go there. Um, so what are the other questions we got here? Um, who are some of my influences that got me into making music? Uh, well, that just, it, it varies, like... Um, at the very beginning, it was people like synthesizer guys like Jean-Michel Jarre and just people in pop music that were doing electronic music because that was all I could see, like Human League. I love the Pet Shop Boys. I still do. Um, I went through a big ambient kind of phase, about 18-ish, like Aphex Twin, stuff like that. I, st I still listen to Aphex Twin heaps. Um, and then for drum and bass... Um, I would just be listening to Kiss FM, uh, which was a, a London pirate station, which then got a legit license. And I don't live in London, but I'm just about close enough that I could hear it. So I'd, Hype and uh, Frost would be on Wednesdays, I think, and Fabio and Groove Rider at the weekend. And I'd also listen to Colin Dale and Colin Favor on Tuesdays and Thursdays playing uh, like techno um uh, and then and there was a record shop in my town called Hard Edge that my friend Adrian used to work at um, and he'd play me new tunes on vinyl and stuff and then used to sell them to me over the phone while I was a student and started DJing. Um, the Real Shumagorath says, what would you say is the most important to work on to learn as a beginning producer? Um, one exercise I recommend is finding a track that you really like by somebody else that you would want to kind of sound like and kind of try to recreate it. Um, both in terms of arrangement and sounds and mix down um, get a you know find a track you're really into that's by someone who you really rate a track that you really love DJing that you know sounds good and sit there and like analyze it and just try to copy it um, just so you kind of get an idea of of what it takes and you know how how many elements there are in there and you know um i, I need to i need to go back and, and do that now it, like everything i do now just gets so overcomplicated. um but yeah like I, I sort of did that a bit in the early days um definitely a lot of referencing other stuff this uh, and also now i mean it's different from when i started um there are uh, seeing as i'm chatting let's change the the view camera and chat how's that um yeah i mean there's lots of youtube uh tutorials and things and stuff like this i mean this is this is not a very well put together tutorial thing but uh, you know I, I would hope you'll pick up bits and bobs of information from how i do stuff um on these sorts of q a vibes um Ooh, Lyndon Allen on Facebook says, what was the story when you produced Up All Night? Where were you? Was it a big studio session that night or day? How did it happen? Um, that was like, I don't know, 99 or 2000. I still lived at my parents at that point. Um, and I was... Did I do it? I... I have to go back and work out how old I was. I think I'd graduated university. Yeah, I was out of university at that point. I'd graduated, um, but I was still living at my parents. Um, and it was, I think, 
I'd got my Mac. I'd got a Mac very recently, so started to get into the ability to edit audio with plugins and things on the hard disk, uh, which was kind of revolutionary for all of us then because you could destructively edit breaks with weird and wonderful plugins and make them, you know, twist up breaks in ways you hadn't been able to do before. Uh, like before, it was basically distort them a bit, EQ them a bit, do some funny compression stuff, filters, funny filters if you had an emu sampler or something. Um, so I I was always quite organised and I'd, I had a big kit laid out on the keyboard of a whole bunch of breaks I'd already had and I'd already chopped them up manually on my Roland sampler. Um and I loaded them all into, or like re-recorded them into the Mac, and then using Bias Peak, uh, which was a sort of um, audio editor, I was like destructively editing them with VS various VST plugins, and then I resampled those breaks back into the sampler, um, and I I think I probably spent about two days prepping all these breaks, making a huge kit of lots of old original hardcore breaks, but had all, all been kind of modified and sort of put through funny ring modulators and stuff. Um, and then I just started, um, I don't know, messing around with the breaks. And I think I started, to, I, the, the, the thing with Up All Night, I've, I've said this before, um, it started as a, at that time it was a reaction against a lot of, um, tracks that were just ripping off old hardcore um and like just straight up stealing the riff off a well-known massive hardcore track and then like whacking an amen break under it and being like yeah check out my new tune um so i was sort of like oh this this sucks but wouldn't it be cool to do a modern track that sounded like old school rave with whatever modern techniques we had available at that time which are not modern by today's standards um so i was like all right well some beeps so i started with the beeps and i was i played that the i probably won't be able to oh, <laughs> i've got the wrong preset on there so i can't even play it um yeah i played the beeps but it was that was out of a novation nova even though it was a or novation supernova little module thing um with a with its own built-in delay that was a really nice sort of ping-pongy delay that seemed to make it work. Um, I had a really old sample CD with the vocals on, uh, which I were just a normal woman singing random phrases, um, and I picked a few of them out and then pitched them up so they sounded like old rave stuff. Um, sampled a bunch of rave stabs in um, and sort of individual acid notes and stuff. And then just sort of built the track up. But it happened very quickly. And I had one of those eureka moments where I was like, shit, this is going to be good. I need to just fucking roll it out. Um, and it, it wrote itself very quickly. I, I, it's one of those ones where I can't really... I remember the, I remember it well, but I don't really remember the specifics. Um, but I knew it was important. And I was like, this is for heads. This is this is my Metalheads tune. Because um, I'd... Uh, I really, really wanted to have something that properly a proper single out of Metalheads at that point. I'd already had, I think, Diversify had been on Platinum Breaks two or three or something like that, um, and Storm had been really supportive at like trying to get me in there and Bailey as well. Um, and I was like, yes, this this could be the one. So um, there you go. That's a bit of the story of Up All Night. Is the Data Three bootleg of Up All Night coming out? Says uh, DJ Greenbag Twenty Two. Yes, it is. Um, it was on hold for a little bit because of COVID and vinyl manufacturing and stuff. But it's been mastered already. It was mastered a while ago. Um, I've remastered the original and the epic mix. That's all with the sort of more trancey intro. Um, so it is coming back, coming out. Um, I don't know the release date yet. They haven't got one set, but um, it is now sort of in, in operation. It was on hold for a little bit just because of COVID. COVID vibes. Big up the Mildert crew. Is there a Van Mildert crew? Patrick Ghetto, Gecko? Hey. Patrick Gecko. Is that Patrick? My mate Patrick from Durham. Ah, if it is. Hey. I hope you heard the peacock sound in the intro. That's your peacock. Um... Oh, Tim. Hello, Tim. Hey. 
I remember you calling me at 2 a.m. in the morning to play you a VIP of Up All Night. Oh, oh, wow. God. Sorry. God, I used to phone people up in the middle of the night drunk. I remember I used to phone up fucking mates coming back at like 4 a.m. from bar and going, oh, hello. Oh, I just guess who I met last night. Oh, they played my song. Oh. And it'd be like a friend of mine that had to go to work in the morning. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, sorry if I phoned you in the middle of the night, friends. <laughs> Oh, it's good to see Tim Exile. I didn't know you're on Twitch. Everybody give Tim Exile a follow. He's an absolute legend. Legend. Uh, were you Hatfield College? No, you were Grey, Grey College? I can't remember. What college was Tim Exile in? Uh, Collingwood? No. What? Co what? Roscoe was Collingwood. You were Grey, weren't you? I can't, I can't remember. Uh, um, are there any questions? I'm just scrolling back, so I can't see the most recent things. I'm just checking for any of the questions. Um, what equipments did I use when doing Up All Night? Um, it was a bit of a transient period. Is when I'd first got my... I'd got a Mac that was capable of doing soft synths and, um, uh, you know, all, audio recording and everything, but I still had all my outboard and my sampler, so I was... I was kind of, I didn't want to fully invest because I wasn't sure how much the computer could handle and all of that. So um, I was kind of bouncing audio um, and then resampling it and just still just using the Mac as a sequencer while I got used to how Logic operated because it was switching to a, a timeline like this uh, compared to what I'd been used to previously on an Atari ST and just a black and white. That Notator had a very sort of strange... Uh -huh. um, arrangement layout it was it was vertical and you had like four patterns you could put in of any length and then each pattern could have up to like 16 elements like i was really good at it it was really fast and um it, it did help me work very quickly and get less caught up in in stuff thanks for the follow confront 82 um hatfield tim xr's hatfield ah yeah haha <laughs> Uh, Noel Hensley says, I love that you use guitars in some of your tracks like Mercury Skies and Midnight Air. Do you play those yourself or is it synth type thing? No, I don't. Um, I can't play guitar apart from like some blues chords. I'm, I'm terrible. I don't own a guitar. Um, some of the tracks uh, like Mercury Skies, I used a virtual guitar thing. Um, I'll see if I can load up a native instruments uh, virtual guitar, although I haven't used any of them. But um, the native instruments... Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't want to delete that. I'm not going to use this. This is Lately Bass. So this is um, an absolute classic FM bass sound I was going to use in this track, but um, I don't think I am. Uh, let's have a look and see what native instruments have um, in terms of mad realistic sampled guitar stuff tim will probably know better than me you're the native instruments dude um but yeah i used a steinberg virtual guitarist on the original mercury skies um show me my library how do i make it look nice oh there we go uh, guitars ah maybe i can uh what's a good guitars one i've got all this stuff oh, here we go MM bass, Rickenbacker. That looks like a bass guitar rather than a proper guitar. Electric strummed, okay. Show me what you got. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this stuff is mad. It's like, these are all samples that you can play. Is it gonna load? I'll double clicks on it. So I'm playing different notes on the keyboard now. And then different, further down, it's got weird effects and stuff. That's all right. And then, of course, you can feed that through distortion plugins and, and all stuff. But um, generally with guitars, um, I'll, I'll contact someone I know who plays guitar and explain what I need them to do and get them to record it. And it's amazing how, how good you can, if you just get a decent recording of a sort of acoustic guitar, you can whack it through all these plugins and stuff and make it sound like mad punk rock stuff. Um, so that's my preferred way to do it, really, because by the time I've faffed around trying to make a, a sample thing, 
sound right I, I might as well have um got an actual real one done and like paid somebody to you know given someone some employment <laughs> um cool what else we got michael toast how you doing mate good to see you in the chat vegas crew representing i'll give you all a little blast of this tune again we've been quiet for a while this is not finished i've i've still got a lot of work to do on it um i haven't put miss swooshes and booms in you can see these purple sounds here how are we doing on the volume i can turn up a bit <laughs> As a guitarist, this bit offends me, yeah. <laughs> well, I did say I'd much rather use real guitarists, and I generally do. Back in the day, I didn't, but now I do. It sounds okay. Maybe a bit loud. Oh, this here, actually. That's one of those original breaks from the Up All Night sessions. It's an old original hardcore one that I fed through some kind of random shit. Just in the background there. That vocal needs to go. I'll just show you what I'm muting here. I put this in. That's a, probably a dodgy sample I can't use anyway, but I fed it. It's it's bathed in too much reverb, but I might actually get a top line vocalist in to do some stuff like some like proper diva stuff. All that. Crap. <laughs> what? I like this section. I need to turn down the. I'm, I'm too much into the whistles, posse. There, it's too loud. Oh, I put a little rave siren in there as well. Uh, where's the rave siren? Bleep bloop. Oh yeah, someone was asking. That's the bleep bloop. Lots of just little things like this in the background. And that's edited there to give it some splashiness. Let's go back to the breakdown again. I'll blast it before I turn it, turn it off. I need to work on the bass at this 64 bar section. It's, it's not sorted. Hairstyles are not production questions. <laughs> I would say ask me that when I'm drunk, but I don't drink anymore, so. Let's see how this sounds just through um, Isotope. Ooh. There we go. Fixed it. <laughs> just crushed it. How do you add more bands in?
More cowbell. <laughs> Come on, there's too much cowbell. Click on the spectrum. Stop. It didn't used to be like this on Ozone 8. How do I... What, I can't put any more flipping... Ban ah! Of course, and you, you set them where you want them. There we go. Can I have another one? Yep, yeah, great. Okay. I'll blast it again. I'm just going to keep blasting it. This is the point in tune making process where you just keep playing it over and over and over. So try and mono the bass a bit. Widen out the tops. TB will probably phone me up and say, John, don't do that. That's wrong. Don't do it. Terrible practice. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, the band's vibes, everyone. Make much difference, but I'll leave that. The mix sounds sort of alright so far, to be honest. It's not particularly loud, though. actually not too bad. The brakes come through quite nicely. But that's absolutely ruthless threshold there. <laughs> this does not feel right. Cool! I think we'll knock it on the head there, really. I uh, don't didn't really intend to, to do these streams for too long for fear of boring you, but it's nice to come on and... Um, have a chat and answer any of your questions and stuff and show you what I'm up to. It'll give me a bit of accountability for my studio sessions. I'm trying to like absolutely make sure I spend some time in the studio on Tuesdays um, and uh, should really spend more time. Like I've only done a few hours today. Um, but um, yeah, this I'm, I'm pleased with how this tune's going. It's got most of the elements in there that I um, think it needs now, really. Uh, Bass lines need more work, um, sound sort of a bit more interesting and clever and more modern. Um, I need to work out the lead up into that second breakdown. I need to tidy up the first breakdown. I need to sort out those acid things a bit. I need to turn down the, the raving crew. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. I think if I give it another good session, I could knock it on the head because I, I really want to stop spending so long on tracks and overthinking things and just get them bloody done. Um, sorry for all of the uh, Streamlabs automatic posts in there, but um, I got to stick them in there to try and encourage some of you to buy merch and stuff like that or listen to my tunes. So I hope they're not too annoying. Um, it doesn't look like anybody's got told off for posting links and things. Um, I set up a uh, chat bot thing last week and during the um, DJ set live stream, um, when people were posting links to help other people, it was saying, please don't post links. Um, so I tweaked that a bit so it should be behaving a bit better. So um, there you go. How about a bit of this? For the hacking crew i need i'm going to set up i've also been doing a little bit of stuff behind the scenes um today to set up for a special live stream i'm going to do at some point that's full-on star trek vibes um it's going to be amazing um, i'm going to play like super hardcore neuro light speed neuro warp vibes um in a very special star trek kind of way um oh, this is <laughs> that's for when i go to the toilet i put that on <laughs> oh you got your beta t-shirt for your birthday nice one cool am i uh yeah still on um so yeah next stream i might stream tomorrow depends how i feel um i'm gonna try and have another bash on the studio and i've got a whole bunch of web store orders that need packing and uh i've got to brave the shops and go into the post office in my gas mask um but I, I really want to have a video game session because I haven't for a while now um, on this Escape from Tarkov game that I play. So I might, if I do that, I'll just stream while I'm playing games. And if any of you want to come in the chat, I'll try and chat to you. Um, and then on Thursday, oh, the light's changed. Um, 
on Thursday morning. That's when I go through all the new promos I have, all the new drum and bass promos and new releases and stuff. And I've made some tweaks to that so the audio sounds better and it'll look a bit more fun. Um, and we're going to do drum and bass bingo as well. We're doing drum and bass promo bingo um, so we can tick off uh, when there's a foghorn and when there's a, a too much cowbell Um when there's a like really weird, super saturated, high pitched snare, things like that. Uh, so that's gonna be cool. And then Friday night, I'll be doing an upfront drum and bass DJ set uh, in the loft. So yeah, all right. Um, oh, I forgot to put the um, scene in for the um, thanks for watching. Hang on, let's see if I can do that live. Um, stream ending. Uh, Okay, can you hear me? I'm still here. I'm just putting in this video for the special ending thing. Media source, add existing. No, add a new one. S great news, stream ending. I want to show, I made, made this bloody video at the weekend. It took me half a day. Uh, Dropbox. Find the visuals, background images, no stream ending, there we go, stick him in there, nice one brother. <laughs> So I'll say bye, thanks for tuning in everybody, and here's the uh, stream ending thing, I'll uh, catch you next time. <laughs>